Directors meeting for today, June 17, 2014. President our Commissioner Cuellar, Precinct 1, Palacios, Precinct 2, Palacios, Precinct 4, and myself, we have a quorum. Uh, anybody sign up? No, sir. Uh, on our consent agenda, any concerns? We're okay, Judge. Move for approval. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. On uh, item four. On item four, update on the Delta Watershed Project. Just wanted to get the board an idea where we're at on that. Uh, we've been moving forward with Robert Kisher doing all the analysis on the water tables to make sure that we'll be able to build the system where we need to build it there. Secondly, we've also been running water quality samples on our drain ditch and on the river. We've been working with Pan Am to try to bring them on board and use their cooperative agreements to start doing some of the testing using the students there. We've begun the analysis also of the area as far as what tracts of land might be contingent to be able to develop the project. Uh, we've cleared our issues through the environmental process. Uh, TCEQ has given us to go ahead. We are now working on the water availability model to see how much water we're going to be able to be able to get permitted to be able to utilize on that. We have also have uh, some training going on Monday and Tuesday uh, in Austin with part of a group that provides funding for these projects. There's a lot of private groups out there that could fund it, or there will be some self-serving uh, items on the table to present to this board to bring you up to date. But the program is moving forward on it. Uh, we should have some type of schematics for you all probably within the next month or so on the construction of the reservoir itself for flood control there. So just a general update on where we're at on that project, unless the board has some specific questions on it. Good. Good, sir. Any questions? I'm good. All right, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning, Martha Solisov, Purchasing Department. Item five is the presentation of statements of qualifications received for the RFQ number 140 with title of Professional Legal Services Review of Agreement between Hidalgo County Drainage District number one and Intec Corporation for Hidalgo County Drainage District number one with the request to designate and appoint and approve a committee to score, grade, and evaluate the statements of qualifications received and to score them against the procurement packet details as the procurement packet de details and dictates in order to proceed to the next phase. So I need uh, the, no uh, the uh, announcement of who those. All right. So. Go ahead, Commissioner. Raul. Okay. Raul Lozano. Yolanda Chapa. All right. Marcos Lopez. And if the court permits, I will just contact Precinct 3 yes. and ask uh, the, the commissioner as to who he will be nominating. That would be fine. All right. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Item 6. Item 6. Requesting approval to accept bids and award contracts, sole bidder meeting all specification requirements for RFB number HCDD1 Gasoline on and off highway diesel fuel. We had one bidder, which was Gold Star. Uh, on our unleaded, we have an average increase of about 10 cents a gallon from the previous bid. However, on our diesel, which we use a tremendous amount, it's gone down about 20 cents. So I thought we got a very good price on that. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, request approval of draft specifications approval to advertise for RFB number HCDD1 1410170716. Reinforced concrete pipe, tongue and groove, reinforced concrete pipe, rubber gasket, box covers less than two foot fill, box covered more than two foot fill. This is our standard bid for the year in which we procure from. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item C, requesting approval to issue purchase order to R. Gutierrez Engineering Corp. in the amount of not to exceed $19,624.70 and cents as it relates to construction material testing for FM 495 Trenton and Wisconsin Road Fuel Crossing. These are the last two crossings that we're putting in commission as part of the FM 495 project to close us all out on that project. Great. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Discussion and action to approve First Amendment between the County of Hidalgo, the Edinburgh Consolidated Independent School District, the City of McAllen, and the Hidalgo County Drainage District regarding mile 17 and a half road project. This is a modification for some specific language that the county needed in order to be able to utilize the funds that came in from McAllen for the commissioner to be able to utilize it on construction of the roadway, I believe. We've had legal look at it on our end, and we're good with it, sir. Move for approval. Second. 
Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Discussion and action to approve interlocal cooperative agreement between Hidalgo County and Hidalgo County Drainage District Number 1 as it pertains to maintenance of drainage facilities as outlined in the attached agreement. We've had legal review all of this agreement and what it amounts to is over the past three or four years there's been about 150 miles of facilities that have been turned over from different irrigation districts to the county in which the county is going through the process of getting them cleared as far as ownership. So now we're moving forward where the district will start maintaining those facilities. And also there are certain facilities that the county has built using either urban county money or local money that we are moving forward and to start maintaining it. So it's going to be about 150 linear miles, which could be about 300 miles of maintenance that we're going to be doing. I've asked our purchasing department also to start looking at possibly outsourcing the shredding of some of these facilities to try to expedite the issue and try to limit any additional personnel that might be needed in the future because putting on 300 more miles of drainage systems to shred and maintain, it's going to be a big burden on the district. But I believe in the past year we've been able to work with county forces and district forces to maintain them. So this, I believe, is the main, uh, one of the main processes we need to be able to start maintaining these facilities. Are they going to be up there in the morning? <laughs> uh, it depends, Commissioner, like I said, but we will be starting to maintain them. I know you've got about three, two ditches, particularly in precinct number two and in precinct number four, that the grass is getting knee high on that we need to start shredding those facilities as quickly as possible. We have a bunch of those, too. You've got about <laughs> 100 miles in your precinct, Commissioner. <laughs> Move for approval. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, item 9, 2013 bond series payments. Request approval of application of payment number 3 in the amount of $190,210.96 from Rojas Construction and Paving LLC related to contract number 8CDD1-14-001-0121, Precinct 2 Rural Drainage Development, Northside Village, Hidden Valley Subdivision Area, Drainage Improvements from Agreement for Professional Engineering Services for the 2012 Bond Referendum Rural Drainage Development Program Precinct 2. Everything's in order. The engineer signed off on the paper. Mm -hmm. for approval. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B, request approval of estimate number five to IPR South Central LLC in the amount of $750,618.75 pertaining to contract number TP07-13 through the district membership with HGAC by member number 07149 <coughs> approved by the board on 11-12-2013 for the construction of the radial drain reroute rehabilitation. Again, the estimate's been signed off by the engineer for the board's consideration. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commission, we have no item in their executive session as the board wishes to obtain. <coughs> Move to adjourn. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Judge. Thanks. We have seven minutes uh, before we can start the next meeting. Thank you, Judge. I want to welcome you to the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court meeting for today, June 17, 2014. Present are Commissioner Cuellar, Precinct 1, Palacios, Precinct 2, Palacios, Precinct 4, and myself. We have a quorum. Please uh, join us in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Father in heaven, we ask you to bless everyone here. We ask you to bless us with rain. Thank you for the clouds, for with clouds there's always the possibility of rain. Uh, we need it badly. Uh, we need to get rid of the high pressure area over our area, which is keeping rain out. And Lord, we are sincere about these things. We want you to help us. Please bless the world in its turmoil, especially the nation of Iraq that's going through so much with so many people being murdered because of their faith. We ask you, dear Lord, to bless what we're getting ready to do here today 
give us wisdom and help us to do the right thing according to the people in the county. We ask these things in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. First matter, the consent agenda. Any concerns? Yes, Judge, there's uh, one concern. Can you take uh, up the agenda with the exception of item 12H? 12H. Judge. Yes. Commissioners, uh, I'd also like to pull 12E5. So it's 12E and H? Right, 12E5. 12H. I move for approval, except uh, I'm abstaining on 12E number 5. And H, I think. And uh, we're pulled back uh, 12 H. All right, sir. You need a second? Check. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, Judge Commissioners, then for formal action, can we take action on 12 E5 to approve? Double. Need a second? It's up to uh, okay. Those in favor, say aye. Aye. Aye, motion carries. So for the record, Commissioner Quaid abstained from action on 12E5. Uh, Linda, you had a concern on 12H? 12H. 12H, okay. yes, 12H is uh, under the purchasing department. Uh, this is an agreement that we have forwarded to the company, National City Media, and it has recommended changes through our DA's legal counsel, Michael Garza. I'm asking that you, uh, but the company still has not returned that document, I'm asking and recommending that we, we approve subject to receipt of the document with the recommended changes, and at that point we will have it executed. So I recommend approval, subject to those Chapter restrictions. Subject to trouble. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Virginia, I told you I wouldn't move it up, but uh, ERO is telling us they, they need one or two other individuals to get here. So we're going to move on to open forum. You're on that list anyway. All right, under open forum, first presenter is Virginia Townsend. Well, it really doesn't matter. Good morning, everybody. It really doesn't matter if the ERO is here from what I say. For I, I learned a long time ago that when you have a powerful architectural company, and any of us as plain citizens say something, they usually don't listen anyhow. So, but I'm gonna say what I have to say because I'm still very disappointed in the design of the building. I don't like 10 stories. I don't like glass. I don't like all that glass. I don't like the fact that the building has no personality whatsoever. Minute, Eli, Eli, uh, they're discussing the, the courthouse. I, I thought you might be wanting to hear what uh, the comments that are being made. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I think Eli knows, <laughs> but I'll say it anyhow. Um, I, no, I, I wish it had some semblance of Spanish background of our heritage. Uh, putting a mural on the wall is not gonna do it for me. I wanted something that looked even if it's just the bottom floor and then go up with whatever you need to. But I do not like the design. I, I, I guess number one, and I know you guys are working overtime trying to find out where we're gonna get the money to pay for it, but uh, I would love to not go forward until we knew where the money was coming from for sure. And trying to save little bits like six million out of the trash pickup thing or whatever is gonna barely make a spot on how we're gonna pay for this building. So I hope somebody is putting a lot of thought into that because I don't think I've ever seen such hard times. What's going on in the border with these children is absolutely a disgrace. I don't know who is talking about it a lot here but as a county, it's, it's hurting us all to see this go on. Um, this is the worst time that I can remember uh, of things not going well uh, for all of us. Um, I, I'm not happy with what the appraisal 
district has done to the people with trailers. I'm just, there is just a lot going on that seems terribly unfair to me. Um, very sorry, but it doesn't put me in the mood to be real cooperative and like whatever I get thrown at me. Sorry, thanks. Is Rick Godinez here? Okay, well, go ahead. Next presenter is uh, Fern McClarity. Good morning. In reference to the construction of a new courthouse, I have a question. Will the people get to vote on increasing taxes to build a new courthouse? If the people get to vote on this issue, it will not pass because no one supports increasing taxes or fees, especially during a time when unemployment is high and the economy is struggling to improve. I do not understand how Commissioner's Court can propose a tax increase on the people that you represent and see every day. For the last six years, at least 30% of our property owners have not paid their taxes on time. These same people have been fined $2.1 million and some have lost their property because your ability to spend has exceeded their ability to earn. The Commissioner's Court does not seem to have a problem understanding that we live in the poorest county in the state, but still refuse to cut spending. The Commissioner's Court supports changing the state tax law on hospital districts so that the people in Hidalgo County could pay more taxes. Your objective was to bail out hospitals, not improve the health care of the people. In the same way, the courthouse, your object is not to solve a problem, but to create a monument that will take the people 30 years or more to pay off. The temporary courtroom will cost over $2 million, and the remodeling of the bank building, $4 million, and climbing. You do not seem to care about the impact on the people and the businesses that are creators of jobs and vibrant economy. All you want is a courthouse that is three times bigger. You have a basic uh, misunderstanding of poverty. It means no money today, tomorrow, and all the way into the next year. But if you decide to bypass the people, uh, as you have done in creating the RMA and the Passenger Train Authority, sooner or later the people will bypass you. As I said today, we are here uh, to hear how much the new courthouse will cost. A perfectly good building is standing mostly unused each weekday. Oh, someday more than other, but used as a private business would be using their place of business, it would be working uh, five days a week. Do you all think that a new courthouse is more important than our security? The number of illegal aliens crossing the Rio Grande Valley has increased 58 to 65 percent apprehension compared to the same time last physical year. The, the governor today stated a thousand a day are coming across. The sector uh, encompasses 34,000 square miles. Border Patrol statistics show agents arrested 154,453 illegals in 2013. And a closer look at Border Patrol statistics showed that uh, that was a 363% increase on the OTMs, other than Mexican, arrested from 2011 to 2013. U.S. Representative Cuellar stated, the Valley is expected to have over 240,000, according to the governor, it will be 365,000 apprehension for the fiscal year 2014. Our safety is, sta is at stake. Some have contagious diseases like TB, scabies, measles, chickenpox, and whatever. Again, our safety is at risk. But you are thinking, oh, a new, you think that a new courthouse is more important than the safety of United States citizens. If you must spend money, how about securing the border and stop some of the OTMs from uh, hurting us again like they did on 9-11? Speaking of our safety, how about all those guns missing? Where are they? and whose hands are they in. This is what your responsibility is to the citizens that pay their taxes and do the right thing and obey all the laws. Now we're asking y'all as the Commissioner's Court to make us safe, keep us safe, do something now instead of spending this horrible amount of money on a building that, like I said, that are not being used daily. And look up here at this building, if you want, Virginia was talking about glass, the very top row, look how dirty it is. Can you imagine with the building, with all the glass that you're looking at on that new building, how we're going to keep it clean? Thank you. Next presenter is Ramon Salinas. Yes, good morning. I'm good morning. here concerning about a Colonia Country View subdivision. We asked there for 
drainage, for public lights, for trash. So about three, three and a half years ago, we never got no results. And I seen with Mr. Prison too, Mr. Palacios, he's done a lot of improvements there. And we here, we haven't seen nothing. And I, I hope we can get some results out of this because we pay our taxes. We pay over one million ta in taxes in the past 10 years, in just in that colonia. Um, I think this is, uh, thank you. Thank you. Next presenter is Opal Billman. Good morning. My name is Opal Billman. I was sued for divorce in 1996. The court took control of our community property and refused to return any of it to the two owners or to dismiss the case when Joe died as required by law. Judges use political positions of power and their authority to make the decisions without compliance to the law. When an individual petitions the court for divorce, the court has the authority to give the owners a fair division of their property and return it to them. The court cannot in the United States of America assume the position of owner and do what the court pleases with the community property that the court does not own. The court had no authority to appoint a manager for our community property, allow the court-appointed manager to organize a corporation, and then award our community property to the court through the recently formed corporation. County property records reflect that in divorce case number C328196E, the court awarded the community property of Opal and Joe Billman to the Billman Real Estate LTD Corporation on the foundation of deed number 1181375E. Deed number 1181375E is a list of descriptions of land which comprise the community property of Joe and me. The deed is signed by Joe only, therefore conveys no community property. It is a vacuous, empty, bogus deed that the courts are using to sell our community property and take over our mineral rights without any payment to us. I am not all right with being fleeced. All of my land and all of my income, the court just took away from me. I was awarded a promissory note, a debt, imprisonment. In compliance with the law, the land and mineral rights remain the community property of the estate of Joe Billman and me. Cause number CCD1473E states the court sold two parcels of our land for a street to the city of Mission for $280,000. Who got the money? Cause number CCD1473E also states the court sold the land through the Billman Real Estate LTD and that the court's corporation retained the mineral rights. The corporation has never had ownership of the mineral rights or of our land. The estate of Joe and I have sold nothing. The estate of Joe and I have been paid not one single penny for any of our land or mineral rights. And we have never sold our mineral rights. When Joe filed for divorce, the corporation did not exist. Deed number 1181375E, signed by Joe only, transfers nothing to this newly formed corporation. When Joe filed for divorce, the first, yeah, first 30, of all, 30 seconds, Ms. anything else, okay, I'll finish up and I thank you for your time. When Joe filed for divorce, first of all, before anything else could be done, required from the court was a fair division of our community property between Joe and me, period. That was the judge's only job. And I've got more, but there's always next week. Y'all have a good week. Thank you. Next presenter is Martha Sorley. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Martha Sanchez and I'm a community organizer and coordinator of uh, in La Unión del Pueblo Entero. And I'm here because uh, by, 
I, I guess by the grace of God, we heard that you are voting today on the trash collection. And, or, or at least you try starting the conversation on the three choices that they that they all have to choose from. And that uh, we're really concerned because we've been talking to several people in the colonias, which is this is gonna be affecting, of course, the people, the poorest people in the colonias because the people that can afford, they already hire a company <laughs> to pick up the trash. And so we're really concerned that this um, issue hasn't been brought to the community. I mean, since they're the ones that are gonna be more, more affected. And so we ask in the, uh, the court that uh, you postpone your decision until you take this issue to the community and the community and the uh, and have community forums for the people so they can give you ideas and they can understand why is this change is going to happen and ideas that they have on how to resolve this issue in a positive manner because it is going to be very uh, it's a very detrimental for people who are uh, like um, they've been saying it's like this is a, one of the worst time. And, they can, uh, and we are really need to uh, talk about that with the community. So we're really concerned with this issue. We hope that you postpone uh, your decision until later on. And by the way, I check around. Uh, I heard that one of the, uh, they, they all agree with, or at least you got a proposal from the company that you're gonna choose has been $18 a month. And I check around and some of the other companies are right now charging less than $18 a month. So that means that you're not getting, they're not getting a very good deal for being the, per, the company that is, going to, that is going to be providing this service for the whole uh, county. So anyway, uh, we're asking you to please take in consideration and take this to the community. Um, there is a rise, um, a rise in Lupe who are willing to take people to these community centers so we can discuss this issue and resolve it in a really good manner and so that everybody can uh, come to an agreement on what is the best for the county. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, next presenter is Elda Gonzalez. Buenos dias a todos. Mi nombre es Elda Gonzalez. Uh, soy residente de la colonia Taurus 14 en el precinto 3, el área noroeste de Mission. Y también soy miembro de Lupe y líder de colonia ahí en, en donde yo resido. Y estamos enterados. ¿Ya con eso empiezo? Estamos enterados acerca de lo que acaba de hablar Martita, um, de las tres propuestas que tienen para la recolección de basura. Y queremos pedir. Bueno, yo vengo quizá a recalcar que se posponga esa decisión o esa votación que se va a llevar a cabo porque realmente el cambio afectará bastante a las personas de bajos recursos y a muchos de los que vivimos en colonias. My name is Elda González and I live in Colonia Taurus 14 um, and I'm a member of Lupe. Um, we're here to talk about the three proposals that you have um, that you have planned for the topic of the trash collection. And we want to ask that you uh, postpone your vote on this issue as it will affect, um, as it, it will affect uh, the, the population who, uh, who live in the colonias. Mm -hmm. Quisiéramos que hubiera oportunidades de consultar más con, con los habitantes y escuchar otras opiniones porque las personas que tienen ahorita más bajos uh, entradas de dinero serían los más perjudicados, incluyendo las personas que de la tercera edad que solo cuentan para sobrevivir con su cheque de, 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 de retiro. Um, so we'd like for you to give, uh, to give us the opportunity to uh, consult on this issue and listen to our opinions because of people who um, who are um, a lower income are going to be most affected by these decisions. Creemos que se puede encontrar una solución para este problema, pero que se tienen que considerar ciertos detalles que solamente la población que está viviendo esto um, puede exponer para que el cambio sea positivo tanto para los residentes de colonia como para los uh, autoridades, verdad, que son los responsables. So we think we can find a solution to this problem, but we need to consider um, the people who are going to, uh, who have this need and who are going to be most affected um, so that they can be a part of the solution in um, affecting, affecting the colonias positively. Mm 
Esto. Muchas gracias por su atención. The next presenter is Yvette Salinas. So good morning. My, my name is Yvette Salinas. I'm an organizer for La Unión del Pueblo Entero, and my comment is for all of the commissioners and, of course, uh, the county judge. Um, on behalf of Lupe, I just want to say thank you for meeting with us these past couple of weeks on the issue of public light, which is a very important issue for all of our members and for the general colonia population. So um, we just like to say thank you and that um, thank you for opening your doors to us and that we continue to, uh, we, we look forward to working closely with you all to look for solutions for this issue of public light. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next presenter is Bobby Villarreal. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Bobby Villarreal with the County Judge's Office. Uh, we're just uh, wanting to apprise the court and the public that uh, Judge Garcia and uh, Sheriff uh, Guerra, emergency management and the health department have been meeting or did have a meeting last week with uh, the deputy chief uh, Ortiz with the border patrol uh, concerning the situation that's occurring uh, on the border with uh, all the uh, Central American immigrants that have been been crossing. Uh, they've apprised us of the situation. Uh, we stand ready to assist in any way we have, but at this point the federal government has been handling it. Um, right now it's primarily a federal issue at this point. Uh, it's a policy matter that that's making, uh, I guess, uh, allowing this to occur. But right now, there's no significant financial impact on the county resources at this point. Um, we did take a tour at the invitation of Congress in Cuellar on Saturday. Judge Garcia, myself, uh, Sergio Munoz, the State Representative, Terry Canales, and Senator Eddie Lucio. Uh, we did a tour of the facility there in McAllen on, uh, on uh, Military Highway. It is a very heartbreaking situation uh, to see the children that are there, uh, but we just wanted to inform the public and the commissioner's court that the uh, perception in the national media and, and the local media is that many of these people are staying here. They are primarily being processed and shipped to parts to the north. And there are uh, OTMs, uh, as they've been discussed, family units that are being processed, put on buses, and given uh, orders to show up for court later. However, I guess we just want to make sure that people understood that the primarily most of, of these folks are going northward. There's no, has not, to our knowledge, been a significant impact locally. Uh, right now, the, from the statistics, crime has not risen as of this point last year to this point this year. So we just want to apprise everybody that the community is still safe. This is a federal issue, uh, but we are looking into the situation and that uh, we are planning a pro uh, probably Monday of next week to have a, a briefing with the Border Patrol and all the local stakeholders from them, from the uh, cities and others uh, so that everybody's on the same page and we, we exactly know what is going on. And uh, again, this is a federal issue that's occurring and it's no fault of the locals and uh, our Border Patrol is doing the best that they can with the situation that's been handed to them. Uh, but we just wanted to apprise everybody of that and uh, if you all have any questions, feel free to call me at the office. Um, and, and we can continue to, to discuss this further. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I noticed uh, we have our newly elected County Democratic Party chair uh, here with us today, and I took the liberty of writing his name down under open forum to see if, uh, if subject to his consent, if he's uh, willing to tell us the status of the appointment process or the nomination process for Constable Precinct 4 and Hidalgo County Sheriff. Morning. Uh, good, good morning, Judge Commissioners. Morning. Thank you very much for the invitation and the opportunity to inform you and the public of our process of um, appointing the new the nomination for the sheriff on the Democratic uh, ballot. Um, we have the County Executive Committee has been able to follow several principles. One is we want to make sure that this is an open, fair process so that anybody who has a desire to be sheriff can apply for it. Uh, two, that, um, that it be uh, transparent. Um, as you know, the democratic principles are that all votes are open to the public, every single vote, uh, and our deliberations and our process will also be open to the public. And that third, it be deliberative. Uh, and that means that we've put together a process where we're working on a questionnaire for all candidates. We're vetting the candidates to make sure that they are uh, good candidates, first and foremost, to be sheriff. 
And then secondly, that there'll be good Democratic candidates for at least our ticket. Um, the, the recommendation so far to the CEC, it, the final recommendation is still in progress. We have a subcommittees working on that. But it looks like the day of the forum where we'll present those questions will be July 26th. Um, and uh, from, that, from that point is when we will have the vote. Since we have so many candidates that have applied, um, in the event that one candidate does not get the majority, we have decided to do two rounds in which if one candidate doesn't get the majority, we'll take the top two vote getters and we'll do the second round uh, of voting to determine who gets the majority and who will be the Democratic nomination in November. Is that going to be the same process for the constable? That's correct. The, um, the recommendation for the constable position is going to be the same, exact same process with the date being on the uh, 24th, which is uh, the Thursday before that Saturday. So we'll do the constable first. Of course, we have, it's, it's going to be here in this, in this hall for the constables forum is what we have decided to do because it's, it's, it's a much smaller group voting, there's much less candidates. Uh, we have not yet, because of the, the public interest and the potential that that forum may be televised, we have not yet uh, determined the forum yet for the sheriffs, but once we do, we will make sure we get that out to you and the public. Thank you, sir. All right, at this time, we're going to be moving uh, item 15A up for consideration on our agenda. It's an election matter, and it's the appointment of the Early Voting Ballot Board. Uh, good morning. Amanda Valdez for the Elections Department. Appointment of the Early Voting Ballot Board for July 1, 2014, Democratic primary runoff election, and the appointment of the Central Counting Station for the primary runoff election. I'm going to pass around a list of the recommendations, and Mr. Godinez is going to give you his recommendations for the, the slots that are available. If I may, Judge, again, thank you, uh, Judge Commissioners, for the opportunity to present and make our recommendation for the ballot board. You have before you 13 uh, uh, members of the County Executive Committee that have volunteered their time to be uh, on the ballot board at your discretion. Uh, we also have a recommendation. If you'd like to follow that recommendation on these potential candidates, the, uh, the judges for the ballot board members would, uh, our recommendation, the CEC's recommendation is Kenna Giffen. Julio Garza and Peter Salinas. The alternate uh, judge recommendations for the Central Counting Station would be Aaron Alonso and Christina Walker. Any questions? Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. You, sir. Thank you, Judge and Commissioners. Have a good day. All right, let's move back to um, item 6A. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Julia Benita Sullivan, Public Affairs Director. Um, we have on uh, the agenda, actually I'd like to call um, your attention to our WIC program. Hidalgo County's WIC program has joined a prestigious group um, by being recognized as one of only 25 community agencies and medical facilities in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, India, and Brazil to receive the 2014 Community Care Award from the International Board of Certified Lactation Consultant Examiners and the International Lactation Consultant Association. Here to tell us more about, um, the WIC, about this is the WIC program director, Norman Longoria, and Diana Cordona, the breastfeeding coordinator. You guys will come up. And then we'd like to say a few words and okay. then take a picture. Good morning. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Uh, we received this award for our baby cafe that we have open uh, at um, DHR and where we see 
you know, pregnant women and breastfeeding women and we're there too as a support group for these women. And it's been very successful and we applied for the award and we were very fortunate at, to uh, receive it. So that's what we're here for today to inform you all of that. And other, we'll be talking more about breastfeeding when I come up with the budget amendment. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, item uh, 6B. I'd like to call to the podium Region 1 Representative Tina Atkins, please. Hi. Um, on the agenda is approval of proclamation in support of Region 1 ESC, My Brother's Keeper, Building Ladders of Opportunity Initiative. Um, and we called her up to present her with this proclamation and it's in alignment with President Obama's My Brother's Keeper initiative. Um, Region 1 is partnering with Texas Valley Communities Foundation, Far San Juan Alamo Independent School District and the Office of Congressman Ruben Hinojosa um, to target and address the needs of Latino and African American male youth in the Rio Grande Valley. Would you like to say a few words? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we were really pleased to be a part of My Brother's Keeper. President Obama signed an, a memorandum on February, in February of this year announcing My Brother's Keeper. Um, in the Rio Grande Valley, we have over 400,000 students, half of whom are young males. Um, we are also 98% Hispanic. So My Brother's Keeper seeks to give additional opportunities to young Hispanic males and African American males. And we're very pleased to have this collaboration with the Texas Valley Communities Foundation, with Far San Juan Alamo um, School District, and with the Office of Congressman Ruben Hinojosa, and very pleased to bring this proclamation to you because we truly believe that collaboratively, we can make a difference in young men's lives. We can improve matriculation to college and to gainful employment, and we are very pleased to bring this proclamation to you. Okay. Move for approval. Move for second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We got a little bit ahead. All right, next presenter, uh, next item, item number 6C. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Michael Leo with the County Judge's Office. Uh, we have two items. Item one, presentation by contracted architect, ERO Architects for acceptance and approval by the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court of the schematic design for the new Hidalgo County Courthouse. Uh, with the court's per permission, we'd like to turn it over to Brian Godinez and Eli Ochoa from ERO Architects for their presentation. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. It's a pleasure being with you all here today. Um, as you can see, the uh, final deliverable for the schematic design package for the new courthouse is being delivered to you. Uh, it's also being given to various departments uh, that uh, had a vested interest in uh, this particular project. 
Uh, I want to present to you all, and I don't know if uh, this is the final deliverable book. I'm going to very briefly go over a little presentation. Uh, we don't need to open this if you don't want. Uh, there is a slide presentation that's given in uh, paper form. Looks like this. This is what I'm going to be going over. Uh, just uh, a real quick little housekeeping, just to let you all know, um, this was uh, a collaborative effort uh, by um, three team members, our, uh, ourselves who are leading the team. We also had HDR, uh, which is a um, <coughs> huge, <laughs> large judicial consultant uh, and architect and engineering firm. Uh, they have offices in Austin, Dallas, and Houston. They have been ranked as the uh, second largest uh, judicial <coughs> architectural firm uh, by the World uh, Construction Report. And uh, we also had part of our team, Balfour Beatty. Balfour Beatty is the one uh, who supported us in deriving the numbers that I'm going to be presenting to you all here in just a second. Balfour Beatty is one of the largest construction companies, uh, certainly here in, in the state of Texas. HDR and Balfour are responsible for the two latest uh, courthouse projects in the state of Texas. Uh, one of those being uh, Hayes County, which I think some of the commissioners, um, certainly some of the people in the audience have toured. The other one was uh, the Ellis County Courthouse, and then they were also involved in the restoration of the Hood uh, County uh, Courthouse. Uh, that's uh, the makeup of our team. Just to let you know where we are, if you'll turn to page three, we have uh, completed, and this is a deliverable of the schematic design. You'll see that there are still four more phases to go in this project, uh, but we are uh, between the schematic and the uh, design development phase. Any questions? If not, I'll go on. Our deliverable to y'all by contract uh, is on page four. Uh, it was the site plan, the floor plans, elevations, outline specifications, some renderings you can read through there, area and volume calculations, uh, descriptions on structural, mechanical, and electrical systems. All this was done in an effort to get to this number uh, that uh, we can then use as the starting point from where you move forward uh, from this point on in the, in the process. So... Uh, All this is contained within the book also. If we look uh, also now at the, um, what's in the book, it's on page six of your handout. It includes the project summary, which is under tab one, and you'll see the uh, items that are there, the narratives on the architectural, civil, structural, MEP. It has a program that I'm gonna go over very briefly here for y'all. It has the drawings of the individual plans, and uh, it has a cost estimate that I'm also going to be going over with you all here very briefly. And then uh, the last tab, which is tab four, is the visualizations. On page eight, you will see um, on the far right-hand corner highlighted in blue is a column that says original program. That is the original program that came from the master plan that was adopted by the county. I don't know if you all can remember this document, but looks Eli, is it like the this. page eight of this packet or the Yeah, big no, one? it's page eight of the handout. I'm just using the handout, all right. Judge. Is everybody on page eight? <coughs> you see that blue column? This Mine is, is a, not numbered. I'm not sure of the others though. Yeah, it's very light. It's, on the, it's yeah, very light on the corner. lower right-hand corner. Oh, Judge. yes. Sorry, we'll make sure and uh, make them Bigger big and darker. bold next time. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see that uh, the uh, program square footage uh, based on the master plan was 470,000 square feet. Uh, this was derived by uh, numerous um, meetings with stakeholders. Uh, we went over all the master plan committee. I don't know if you all remember that, but you all appointed several members each to that committee. It was a committee that was made up of approximately 50 people. Uh, and then we also have directly to the left is the revised space program as designed. And uh, one of the things to note here is uh, 
that the revised program is actually less than what was uh, the original master plan uh, program. Uh, that in itself is a feat uh, because typically it goes the other direction. I think this just really speaks to the work that was done by the individual departments. We really nailed the, uh, the uh, program requirements. I, I do want to note that uh, a lot of the, the uh, spaces actually come from judicial standards and uh, that is a, uh, a guideline that we use to make sure that we would not uh, uh, start uh, developing a program that was uh, kind of uh, a wish list of spaces, but actually a very functional list. So the, uh, the schematic design addresses that. Now, uh, I want to go ahead and go over what everybody's been waiting for. Uh, if you'll turn to page... Sorry, Judge, mine doesn't have a page number either. There's a second to the last page. On the top it says project construction cost limitation. Looks like this. Do you all see that? Yes. We see the number. You all on that? We can see the number on the bottom. If you go straight to the number on the bottom without beating around the bush, $127 million, 705,000. 127 million 705,000. That is a construction cost limitation of the project as it is designed currently right now in the schematic design book. Now, that does not mean that by adoption of this document that you are number one agreeing with the 127 million. It doesn't mean that you're agreeing with the design. Uh, it is simply the design is a direct response to the requests that were made from the master plan. And, um, and the cost is associated with that solution. So in moving forward, you all have the discretion to alter anything, uh, to make changes in any of the design. So what I want to make sure uh, when we go away from this is none of this is actually set in stone. That is, is still a very fluid, very pliable project at this point, but this simply gives us a datum point from which we can start to make whatever necessary changes that the commissioner's court feels that they need to make. It does address all the program issues, and uh, now we do know that uh, the cost is actually estimated to be about $127 million. Now, as you all know, um, when you have a project, that is the cost of the brick and mortar. That is the actual cost of construction. Uh, in the planning process that the commissioner's court uh, may want to take on if they choose to continue with this project is what we call a total project cost. The total project cost brings into, uh, into the numbers a, uh, the cost of fees and services, surveying, things of that nature, testing of materials, a fixture, furniture, equipment, uh, some, some uh, technology equipment. And so when you look at a total project cost, uh, you really do need to look beyond just the cost of the building because uh, there's going to be other costs associated with having to construct this building. And if you'll look there on the last page of your handout, it includes fees, security consultants, uh, movable furnishings, security equipment, courthouse technology. There's also an owner's contingency there of close to $7.6 million. Again, this is for budgeting purposes. It's just to make sure that we have everything covered uh, that we can possibly have covered. Now, if you look at the total project cost, that's all in with everything in, you're looking at about $157 million, okay? So what I wanna make clear today is that is in, 2000, is in 2014 numbers. Those are current numbers today. What we've seen happening in the industry, obviously, um, and you all can see it as you travel to Houston, Dallas, or Central Texas area, is there's a lot of construction going on. That construction is costing the cost of constructing to go up at a very rapid pace. Uh, at the time that we prepared this, uh, we were looking somewhere in the neighborhood of about a 4% to 6% hike. Uh, in our current region, in other parts of the state, obviously it's much <clears throat> higher, but uh, that's what we were anticipating. So we did some cost escalation factors for y'all, assuming that uh, the decision to go is not going to occur, say, until three years out. 
which would be 2014. And you'll see there that if we take an assumption of a 4% escalation, uh, the 157 million actually turns into about 177 million. And the 2017 number at a 6% escalation rate, which is where we feel we really are, probably a little closer to, that's $187 million. So one of the things uh, to really take away from this is uh, a real need uh, uh, for a speed to market um, playbook uh, to make sure that we move forward. Uh, just to put these into some numbers that you all may be able to grasp a little easier, uh, every day we wait is about a $25,000 add to the cost of this uh, project. Uh, if you total that up or multiply that out by 365 days, you're looking at about $9 million every year that's going to be added on if we use, if we use a 4% escalation rate. So uh, speed to market is certainly very critical. Uh, I'll entertain any questions if you all have any. I'd like to ask a question. If Virginia were here, she'd want to ask you about the pros and cons on the windows. Well, she, uh, that's she good. She believes we've got too many windows and it takes away from uh, the, the style of the building and, and may produce some other type of problem. As, uh, yeah, I'd be more than happy to address this. And uh, uh, Virginia is a dear friend of mine. And I don't know if you saw us chuckling in the back, but we've had these conversations in the past as we were putting this whole project together, certainly after the last presentation that we had to y'all. If y'all look, if y'all go back and research the uh, master plan book, one of, the, one of the visions that the committee had was to provide daylighting and views. And that was very critical uh, for that committee, and so critical that they asked for it to be placed in this master plan book. That's how, that's how important they felt daylighting and views were. Um, we also went over several organizational uh, um, scenarios or strategies, and what's <laughs> depicted in this schematic design book is one of those three scenarios that we went over that the master plan committee ended up actually selecting. So uh, as I had said at the beginning, this design is a direct response to what was requested from the master plan committee. And, um, I certainly uh, am sensitive to, uh, to the comments that were made earlier. Um, I, you know, the, the beauty of architecture is it's subjective, and what one person thinks is good, another person may not think is good, but this does address all the questions and all the desires and visions of the Master Plan Committee. Uh, the, the issue that she brought up was the, the cost of heating and cooling would be greater because of windows? Well. Uh, it's going to be slightly greater, but not to the extent that people might think that it is. Uh, just to give you an example, if you look on this particular building, the windows are all, for the most part, all facing north, and we do that to mitigate uh, heat gain into the building. Uh, one of the things that you can't see, you can't really see it in your handout here, but there are also some shading devices for the glass, and so everything that can be done to mitigate heat gain into this project has been accomplished. Uh, that's the reason why the that's the reason why the courthouse is situated the way that it is, and that's the reason why the glass is situated where it's at. If you'll notice that the uh, west and the south facades have uh, smaller punched windows, and that again is to mitigate heat gain into the building. So, from an energy uh, conservation perspective, the the we were able to achieve the desires of the master plan committee and still provide the daylighting and views and mitigate heat gain uh, to one of the greatest extents possible by opening up the windows to the north. So this is a strategy that we use both from an engineering point of view and an architectural point of view to be able to get those daylighting and views and not increase the heat gain into the building. Mr. Ochoa. <clears throat> Just so going back to the master plan, originally how we started, um, we started with projections from 60 to 100 million. Uh, at that time, I, I, my question is going to be from the sta standpoints of construction, uh, the, the cost on elevated construction versus reducing the, uh, the elevated construction to 
you know, spread out the square feet. Is there, is there more savings on elevated construction or stretching it out? Because what I see on the master plan, I see a lot of open space. Right. So as we're going further and you know trying to figure out what we were originally trying to digest was sixty to one hundred million dollars. Now we're somewhere amongst you know the new numbers is about one sixty to or one eighty one hundred eighty million dollars with soft costs and all. What are you, what are you, what are your recommendations going to be to the court in regards to reducing it? Because at this point in time, one hundred eighty million dollars is not even at the. I, I don't foresee in. Um, as something we can digest in the immediate future uh, with, our, with our budget uh, constraints. So I guess my, my question to you is, uh, where do we go from here? Um, obviously, the price tag of $180 million is, is, is something that's going to be more of a, of a, a far-reached uh, you know, monetary demand without raising taxes. Um, what would you recommend to the court? Well, uh, let me go back to your very first initial question, which was uh, the cost of going up versus the co cost of going horizontal. Um, one of the major components that's in this particular facility is the uh, defendants in custody. They take up almost the entire first floor. And in order to keep those defendants in custody separated from the public, uh, it really makes more sense for us to go vertical because we can take vertical elevators and move them up and down and keep them totally separated from, from the public. And we actually, this building does have uh, defendant in custody cores. Uh, if you all want, that's basically where all the inmates are. Uh, as you can, um, from just touring our existing uh, courthouse, the inmates are in amongst all the general population. Uh, that's really a no-no from a safety uh, perspective. So if we start going horizontal, now we have to move those inmates instead of moving them vertically in their own little uh, separate um, um, quarter paths, vertical quarter paths, we have to do it horizontally. And it makes it much, much more expensive and much more difficult to be able to um, to be able to accomplish that separation of public from those from those inmates. Um, because um, if we went horizontal also, uh, the, other, the other issue that we would uh, need to contemplate is it is going to be slightly less expensive, but when you look at what you have to do to take care of those defendants in custody, it actually reverses and we're better off going vertically. The open space uh, is certainly available for additional uh, construction in the future if the county ever needs to contemplate whether you want to do some kind of structured parking. Uh, certainly leaves you the land available uh, to be able to do that. Uh, these are just all options that, uh, that really give you the best use of the land um, right now so that you can use it however you'd like to use it in the future. Yeah. Now, going forward, uh, there's a number of things that we can do. Um, you know, if you wanted to reduce a glass, we can reduce a glass. Uh, I think, um, you know, there's certainly an exercise that we can go through. Uh, but for the most part, most of the items that are in this project are pretty much very standard for a courthouse. There's nothing elaborate in the, in the design. Uh, if you look at, um, at the cost estimate, uh, there's, uh, there's not any quote unquote gold plating or anything of that of that nature. It's just simply the cost of this building and what's required for technology. I got it. What's required for technology and uh, and what's required uh, to make sure that we take care of the function of the courthouse. So uh, it, it's 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 a very utilitarian facility. We just happen to make it look very nice. I know I, I asked this, this question in the last um, workshop that we had had. Um, obviously, the functions of the courthouse, obviously, when we build this building, will be everything will be housed in the courthouse itself other than the district attorney's office. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And then on the existing facility, the existing courthouse right now, what, who will be housed and what function will it serve? Uh, at this point in time, the way the schematic design has uh, been contemplated, the, um, we're actually looking to vacate all the functions that are in the existing courthouse and putting them in the new courthouse. 
So uh, the only courthouse function that would be off-site is going to be the DA's office. But the DA still has a component within the new courthouse. So while their main offices are across the street to the south in the admin building, they do have a presence uh, and a function within the courthouse. Right, and I know I read the report. Um, the initial cost of remodeling the existing courthouse, I think there was a projection of about $25 million just to rehab what we have existing. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And that was our best estimate at the time that we, uh, that we prepared the master plan. I, I, I may want to let you all know under tab three is uh, there are some cost saving strategies that have already been developed and they are in the book. Eli. Uh, yes, sir. The judge had a great question regarding the amount of space that was all judge that you could raise a, a concern or a question regarding. Well, the present uh, uh, amount of space that we have in this, in, in this present uh, building that we have as a courthouse is a hundred and and I don't remember the exact number, but it's a little over 100,000. Uh, that's if you include the annex building. If you just look at the building proper, you're probably somewhere around 93. And what we're designing and what we're building that hopefully will uh, be adequate and accommodate uh, the needs of our county as far as the courthouse is concerned into the next century is approximately 400 and what? 470,000 square feet. Now. Uh, uh, remember that and this 470,000 square foot building is what we're looking at in, in the schematic design. That's correct, sir. And that has two shell floors uh, on the ninth and tenth floors uh, for the for the uh, addition of uh, six more courts. The uh, right now on the tenth floor is the uh, court of appeals also. So the other half of the building and the entire ninth floor would be shells so that you can move into those. Um, as you need to, as the county continues to grow and you get new courts. Any, any other questions? Then the, the action needed is uh, acceptance of this schematic design. Is that what we need? See, for, accept, for acceptance, acceptance and, and approval. approval of the schematic design. Just one more question. <clears throat> After accepting this, um, you said that there's a potential chance of, of the firm or working with this plan and modifying it based on whatever the financial needs and the demands and everything. At what phase is that? Would we have to engage in you uh, with your firm again to be able to do that? Or is, it, or we, is this still a working model? Uh, well, number one, it is a working model. Uh, number two is we were hired uh, strictly to do the schematic design package. Uh, if you wish to continue, uh, there is no obligation on the part of the county to continue with ERO architects. Uh, that's certainly up to y'all's discretion. But it does give you the basis from going forward to make any modifications at this point. But now we have some real numbers. If y'all can remember when we did the master plan, uh, there were some numbers that were what we call quote unquote planning numbers, well these numbers are becoming much more real now. And, uh, and so now that we know what these numbers are, as the county proceeds forward with whoever they choose to select, uh, if they choose to select to go forward, of uh, using this as their baseline uh, from which to start any kind of discussions on what materials to change, what items to take out, things of that nature. So. Now we know that what a, a design that addresses a master plan, what it costs. And uh, from that point, you can either move up or down, however you'd like. The one thing to note, uh, as I had stated earlier, is there is a real need uh, and, uh, for a speed to market. And, um, you know, um, the one, I guess the one really takeaway from this is we, if we're going to move forward as a county, uh, we need to make a decision quickly whether we're going to do it or not because the cost is going up very quickly. And it's all really tied into uh, to fuel because uh, virtually any material that's used on the construction site either has uh, some kind of petrochemical 
uh, for the manufacture of that material, or you have to haul it and ship it. So either whether you ship a, um, uh, a finished product or whether you ship a component product, uh, it's a major cost is the cost of shipping. Okay. And as, as, fuel uh, as fuel prices continue to rise, you're gonna see that the cost of construction is gonna pretty much follow the same line. Any other questions? Go ahead, sir. Move for approval. Second. If those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right, next item, item number seven. Mr. Guerra. Judge, there's a, there's a two to this oh, one. That's correct. I'm sorry. Do you want me to read the item? You want to go ahead? Yes, let's move on to 6C2. Uh, the item just reads as follows, discussion and possible action regarding the next steps for the new Hidalgo County Courthouse. All right, the next step is uh, the design development phase, am I correct? Correct. And uh, that's another set of plans. Yes, sir. All right, and that, is that, um, well, why don't we have Eli explain it? Uh, Ms. Eli? Would you please explain uh, to the community uh, the next step, what's involved, and what will an architect be doing? What kind of work would you be providing, or whoever is selected? The next step. Yes, the next step in the process is called design development. And design development is where you refine what was designed in the schematic design. And if I had to describe it, it would be putting the meat on the bones. What you have right now are the bones, so you have a basic structure of how you're going to move forward. Uh, it's just now, uh, you know, how are you going to then structure it at that point? And so the schematic design and the description of schematic design is actually in your book also. So um, there's a set of deliverables that are typically uh, very contractual, but uh, in a metaphorical point of view, it's really putting the meat on the bones and further defining the project. All right. And... The issue before us is what, you know, what uh, action are we going to be taking regarding this next step? Judge, I, just so that I can expand uh, a bit, the next step as far as the county would be concerned would either be to uh, do the process that we have done before to nominate firms from our pool of architectural firms, approved pool, or go out on an RFQ for a project specific uh, design with the three components that are still left, as opposed to the normal four, uh, on the design and construction of a courthouse. So it would be up to the court to decide which way they wanted to go. All right. And the choices are we either look either into our pool? Either nominate from the pool those architectural firms that have in their statements of qualifications the design element for this type of structure, narrow it by that type of category, because they all do disclose to us the disciplines that they are uh, suited for. Either that, or you go out and secure a, a request for qualifications for an architect for those qualified firms in the area of design of, of these type of uh, structural uh, structures, and uh, go for that. Oh, we're not doing that right now. We're just moving. No, sir. I wanted to, to let you right. know what the next process was, okay. the next step for the county. Do you want us to act on what process no, no, to take to, at all? You don't have it on here, but uh, well, continue. you do have that you can act, but it, it's up to you. First is the decision. Are you going through the pool or are you going to go through a project-specific procurement it, process? When, when do we take that action? At the time you all direct me to do next it. Next meeting or whatever? Yes. All right. Well, put it on for next meeting. To the, that way, we can uh, decide whether we're going to what be choices you have going into the pool or uh, or for discussion. It up. Yes, sir. Certainly. Okay. Judge, if I may, would would then at at the point that Marty's ready to or or has something on the agenda, um, where could we? Well, uh, technically, if where, you where go that we, route, what, brother? I, I was going to ask if you go that route. Well, well Marty, I mean, just, okay. just a minute, Marty. Yeah. What, what were you asking? Uh, I was going to ask at what point we could look at this project maybe for, from a value engineering standpoint to get the best bang for the dollar. 
That may be when we get the construction plans. That would be included in the next phase the next of phase? For your architectural contract. I, I think it would be important also. Because in the design development yeah. phase, as, as Mr. Uh, it, Ochoa was describing, is where you're going to incorporate that value design, that value engineering. Engineering. I guess mine's a simple question. When we get into the design development phase, is there phases within that phase to make sure that we value engineer before they go out and develop um, our um, building plans mm -hmm. and, and yes. whatnot? But so yes. that we don't release within that phase, there's multiple releases within that phase because I'd be afraid that at the middle we engage in this, this design development phase mm -hmm. and they just run through without no, that having would be the opportunity the to value engineer this. That would be the phase. Okay. But you'd be close, but working very closely. If I, under, if I understand correctly, we're just going to so we can continue and then decide. Correct, but I right. will caution the court. Let, let's just say given the figures you've been given today and round it off to 160 million. Whatever the number is. You would still, when you go that step in selecting an architect, you do need to secure the fees for that architect. And you're talking anywhere from a 5% to a 7%, 7.5% of construction cost. But that, Orderly, that's, so that's anywhere from that. eight, oh, certainly. But or, I'm saying just so that we know that at the point you also approve a contract for that design and, and construction yeah. of a new, you need to have that money in place. Not for the building itself, but for the engineer, for the architectural fees. For the fees. architectural right. fees. Right, no, that's understood, yes. Uh, Valde, and, uh, Judge and Commissioner, also recommend that we sit. I know we have, the, we have an, an item on the agenda today I'm on financial advisors, but I, you know, I don't think that we've crossed uh, the bridge on the question of the financing aspect. That no, at we the have same to. time we we're working before we release, uh, we might go through the poll and go through that process, but we have to immediately sit with our financial advisors exactly. as well as budget and all to assure that whatever we're going after, we're going to financially be able to digest. You don't want to invest so far what well, we've already invested in this phase, but the new one, which would be at a minimum, let's say, $8 million, and not have just own plans and not have an end goal, which is the construction right. of the right. building. Okay. Am I correct in stating, Marty, that in our pool of architects, how many do we have? Oh, that? I don't know that number, Judge. I, I apologize, but I don't know right Approximately. Now. Am 20, I correct that none, of them have, that none of them have ever built a courthouse? I would have to go through their statements of qualifications. Okay. They, they would tell us whether they've built uh, industrial buildings, uh, commercial buildings, uh, institutional buildings, you know, uh, that would be, but I, I would think that yes, uh, yes a project case, specific may be the route to go for the county in which you narrow <coughs> uh, the field to those architectural firms that have focused and have as their forte the construction of courthouses. And they would have to partner up with some of these. Uh, that is, joint ventures firms. are permitted. Yes, All certainly. Right. Okay. All right, item number seven. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Um, item seven, eight, one, and two, there's no action to be taken unless there's action, un unless, uh, unless we have an uh, agenda item further down to take that action. Um, item B, I'm gonna ask uh, Mr. Palacios uh, to give the court an update on our first and second floor administration building. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Good morning, sir. Okay, put on hold, pause it, pause it, pause it. Okay. Judge, very brief, uh, <clears throat> Commissioners. Um, as I mentioned before, um, progress of the construction project is moving very, uh, fairly steadily. Um, uh, we, have, uh, we have encountered some issues that we've overcome, nothing major. It's just construction uh, issues that uh, have surfaced, uh, uh, but uh, uh, they were presented and they were discussed. And uh, as for our evaluation and presentation yesterday, uh, we did a, a preliminary walkthrough uh, in the afternoon <laughs> and one this morning. Uh, on items that uh, that uh, we feel that uh, are falling a little bit behind, but uh, 
what we did here is uh, this presentation today, <clears throat> in essence, is we're bringing you the courthouse to you. Uh, so I know in the last pieces we brought you still pictures, and if you give us a brief, I want to just present to you of what what the actual work has been done in the last in the past week. Do we have a sound? Probably not. I do apologize. So basically what we have here is the overview of the first floor. The activity of the contractors and the workers, that is the metal studs, the sheetrock and the drywall at the stairwell in the lobby. Uh, it, the contractors working on the mechanical systems. As you can see, they're uh, working on putting all the metal studs uh, and correcting the plumbing. Uh, they're finalizing the mechanical systems, as you see there. Um, the plumbing, as you can see, has also uh, been to completion on the first and second floor. The mechanical systems have been almost to 100% at a stopping point, complete, uh, pending the metal studs and the rest of the erection of the walls. The plumbing, the copper lines, everything has been uh, uh, above ceiling. The stairwell inside the facility, that's been complete. Uh, the concrete has been poured, as you can see. The uh, electrical raceway, uh, everything basically above the ceiling is almost to completion. The contractor's moving, again, fairly steadily. Uh, and uh, um, there's items that, uh, that have to be completed prior to them introducing the, the second phase. The sheetrock is moving fairly uh, along. The city of Edinburgh was out there yesterday of uh, obtaining the permit for the second floor. As you can see, one side of the walls, as you can see there, has sheetrock and the other one doesn't. So the contractor is taking the foresight of moving forward and taking that first step forward of, of uh, uh, the leveling of the floor, as you can see. Uh, change order that was brought to you, that's uh, come to uh, complete. Um, that's on the second floor and the first floor. Elect electrical conduits have been already in place, uh, pending the uh, inspectors uh, to approve, which was done yesterday. The overhead ceiling, the plumbing and electrical. More electrical on the second floor, metal studs, air conditioning equipment, all of it is on site. That's some of the remaining demolition that, that uh, was there from the existing courthouse. I'm sorry, Commissioner's Court. Self-leveling in, in various offices. So basically, I, uh, uh, aside from the still pictures, we brought you a short video. I have copies, duplicates, for your viewing at a slower pace. But uh, that is basically, and if, if you observe the cleanliness, commissioners, uh, usually a construction site is not always this clean, but the contractor and everybody involved has done a good job of keep, keeping it up to par and in, in, in good working order. Um, do you have any questions? Looking good. Keep it up. Thank you, sir. Mr. Guerra? No, that look. Thank you. Judge, um, I'm going to move on to item C. I'm asking the court to accept a, a settlement check or a sec, accept the check from Travelers Insurance Company in the amount of $9,392.32. This is a reimbursement uh, in an amount that exceeded our SIR in connection with a claim, uh, case number 710-CV-00268. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D is an acceptance of a settlement check that I'm asking the court to consider and uh, take action on <coughs> from Endeavor General Agency, LLC. Uh, the dollar amount is $13,741.82, and this will settle an auto accident with one of our county vehicles. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 I motion carries. Uh, item E is discussion consideration action on rescheduling the court meeting of Tuesday, July 1st, 2014. Judge Commissioners, as uh, uh, I've been working with the court uh, on other uh, commissioners' court meetings because of um, conflicts in schedules, uh, I'm going to ask the court to consider for us to meet on Monday, uh, the 30th, uh, for our commissioners' court. Uh, this is a special meeting, not a regular meeting, and therefore. Uh, special meetings can be held uh, on any day of the week. Uh, so with the court's consideration, I'd like uh, the court to take action for the 30th uh, for us to meet. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. All right. Uh, item 8, our constable, Precinct 3. Yes. Uh, 
Oh, I I'm sorry, Linda. Yes, Judge, my apologies. If we could, uh, uh, Mr. Burroughs, uh, if we could um, actually take action uh, with respect to AT, if we can uh, move on to 11D first. 11D as 11, in David? 11D as in David, yes, sir. Before we do 8D. I'm sorry, Linda. All right. 11D. 11D. All right. Are you going to present it, brother? Um, it's morning. under the sheriff's office. Um, morning, Judge, Commissioners. Morning, sir. Gabriel Castaneda, Sheriff Geva. 11D, number one, authorization and approval to accept the grant adjustment notice in reference to Operation Stone Garden FY 2011 special supplemental award of 528,560 and 26 cents an authorization for county judge as authorized official to sign and initial required documents. Move for approval. Second. <clears throat> Those two, in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number two, authorization to accept the extension of grant for new termination date 8-15-2014 as noted on the grant adjustment notice. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number three, authorization to pay overtime reimbursable under grant terms and conditions. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And number four, approval of certification of revenues as certified by the county auditor for the financial year 2011 Operation Stone Garden Supplemental. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Commander. I'll be back. And Mr. Boyles? And then now we can uh, take action on 8 All right. All right. Good Let's morning. Dan Rolls on behalf of the Council Government. Oh, 8 a.m., sorry. This is the approval and appropriation of the 2011 Operation Stone Garden Supplemental Grant Funds for the Constable Precinct 3 Department in the total amount of $66,413. Move, Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, sir. That's all I have, sir. Item 8B. Precinct 4. Good morning, Judge. Commissioner. Good morning, sir. Um, our uh, agenda item here, Judge, uh, this morning is 81-45067, uh, uh, authorization and approval to purchase through the State of Texas Surplus Property Program under Chapter 2175.001 of the Texas Government Code and Section 262.0249C. Uh, for 2011 Fort Crown, uh, Crown Victorious uh, Police inter uh, Interceptors, Model Vehicles, and Equipment. Uh, the equipment judge, uh, commissioners, at uh, light bars, uh, stalker radars, deck lights, and uh, center councils um, for the total amount of $15,040. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And uh, also authorization for the person department to process requisition and issue a purchase order and county treasurer's cut a check uh, made payable to the Texas Department of Public Safety after uh, completion of the county auditor's review procedures. Move, Move for approval. Second. Check. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And also judge, uh, county uh, judge uh, and uh, commissioners here, uh, the uh, uh, other agenda item we've got is A1-45018. Uh, the approval of certification of revenues as certified by the county auditor for the uh, confiscation of narcotic funds awarded and received from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security Office. <clears throat> Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And approval of a 2014 appropriation of funds for Constable Precinct 4 U.S. Treasurer uh, 1259 in the amount of 38,984.4 cents. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Thank you, sir. Uh, item 9, our HR. Good morning. morning. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning. Um, our item is A144935 for the Elections Department. Discussion, consideration, and approval to extend the following eight temporary full-time positions 
through the end of um, year 2014. Effective July 1st, 2014 through 1230, 2014. Slot numbers T157, 158, 159, 160, 161, 163, 164, and 165. Election clerks, uh, proposed salary 9,560. Move for approval on 9A, 2, and 3. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. And that included uh, 2 and 3 in yes, your motion? Yes, All right, sir. Item 10, our DA's office. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. Morning, Mr. Casades asked that uh, we present this on behalf of the District Attorney's Office. On item 10A, we're going to take no action on that item. On item 10B, this is approval for the following expenses in accordance with the ex exiting officials' expenditure policy. Uh, these expenditures are related to uh, compliance with the state bar's requirement for uh, continuous legal education training, uh, expenses in the amount of $695 for registration, uh, $600, pardon me, $369.60 for mileage reimbursement, $744.12 for lodging, $186 for meals, uh, the total being $1,994.72. Uh, for Mr. Dene Guerra. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge. Commissioners. Sir, item 11, our Sheriff's Office. Good morning, gentlemen, once again. Morning. Under 11A, I'm going to ask that uh, item 1 and 2, we take no action. All right, sir. We go to 11B, and I'm going to start with number two. <clears throat> Discussion and authorization and approval to execute amendments to the Operation Stone Garden Grant, subrecipient interlocal agreement from the Governor's Division of Emergency Management, Texas Department of Public Safety, between the County of Hidalgo and the City Police Departments of Hidalgo, Mission, FAR, and the Texas Department of Public Safety. And this is subject to a, uh, approval by the <coughs> Texas Department of Public Safety Legal <coughs> Department. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I'll go back to number one. Approval to appropriate the following budgets for additional award amounts pursuant to the amount amended sub recipient inter interlocal agreements <clears throat> with the County of Hidalgo for the Operation Stone Garden from the Governor's Division of Emergency Management, Texas Department of Public Safety, with the exception of the appropriation for DPS personnel. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, 11C, number one, authorization to accept the grant adjustment notice in reference to the Operation Stone Garden financial fiscal year 2012 Supplement award of one million fifteen thousand eight hundred and twenty-four and eighty-two cents. An authorization for a county judge as authorized official to sign an initial required documents. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number two, authorization to accept extension of grant to, to new termination date 8-15-2014 as noted on the grant adjustment notice. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number three, authorization to pay overtime reimbursable under the grant terms and conditions. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And number four, approval of certification of re revenues as certified by the county auditors for the fiscal year 2012 Operation Stone Garden grant supplemental. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries. Number five, approval to appropriate the budget for sheriff's office portion of the financial physical year 2012 Operation Stone Garden grant supplemental in the amount of 168221 and 42 cents. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We go to 11E. Mm. I'll read number two. Discussion, authorization, and approval to execute the op 
Operation Stone Garden Grant Subrecipient Interlocal Agreement for the Governor's Division of Emergency Management, Texas Department of Public Safety, between the County of Hidalgo and the Texas Department of Public Safety, uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, and the Office of Attorney Generals, subject to approval by their legal departments of each entity. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And I ask that we take uh, no action <coughs> on uh, 11E1. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 12, our HR department. No, Health and Human Services Department, sorry. Good morning. Morning. Good morning, ma'am. Okay. Item A is requesting approval to submit grant application for the DSHS Community Preparedness Section Discretionary Funding Opportunity. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B is requesting approval of the following claim invoice with authority for the county treasurer to issue payment check after review, audit, and processing procedures are completed by the county auditor. Kevin Nolting Consulting, LLC, invoice number 418 in the amount of $902.07. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And there's no action on C or D. Thank you. Thank you. Item 13, of facilities management. Chair, it's Commissioner Daniel Flores, Facilities Management. Uh, item 13A, Facilities Management requesting approval to process the following invoice as a claim uh, with the authority for the County Treasurer to issue payment in re after review, auditing, processing. Procedures are completed by the Auditor's Office. This is a uh, filing fee for the Department of uh, State Health Services, sir, for some removal that we did on the uh, old admin building, sir. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item 14, Urban County. Deanna. Deanna. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Our first item on the agenda is an interlocal agreement. We're asking for your approval between Hidalgo County and the Hidalgo County Irrigation District Number 6 for a project in Precinct 3. This is a Mile 2 bridge improvement project, and we're rec recommending your approval. However, there was a concern on behalf of the Auditor's Office. Not contain some terms which I think were forwarded to legal counsel and urban county and precinct and the precinct as well regarding uh, the maintenance of the project once complete. Like who is going to maintain what e each party's responsibility regarding maintenance after completion of the project. And also, I think attached to the agreement was a separate project agreement which normally would be uh, included on the agenda as a separate item because it requires separate approval, separate and specific approval. So we recommend that this item be brought back. Actually, I've, I've spoken with both uh, with Mingo from Precinct Three, and I did contact Mr. Mr. Crane regarding this item. The the road is a county road, therefore the road will m be maintained by the county. The bridge is also a part of the county road. The irrigation an underground and irrigation line is a, the responsibility of the drainage district. And irrigation irrigation district. District. I'm, I'm, I mean the irrigation, the irrigation district. The agreement was reviewed by our attorney as well as the irrigation district's attorney. Now, I, uh, Ms. Linda Fong has made a comment regarding one, one item that should be on the agenda separately, aside from the approval of the, interlo of the interlocal agreement. However, I, I believe that that is merely a statement saying, yes, we went to commissioner's court and yes, we did approve the interlocal agreement. I don't know. I could not find it in the statute where it said it had to be done separately. I just take that this See, morning. Well, first of all, everything she says is correct. And when you make the motion to approve it, uh, just <clears throat> say that it approves both the interlocal agreement and the other agreement that's attached to it. Okay. Now, on the issue regarding who maintains what, should that be a part of the agreement, or is it in obvious? this case no? Because it was a, the, you get a county road and a county bridge which is definitely owned by the county and maintained by the county. Then the other facilities are also owned by the irrigation district, and it's under their duty to maintain their own facilities. <coughs> okay, so Mr. Verdad is nodding his head. Does that mean you're 
we we need to approve it, Mingo. That is correct. Yeah. So they, uh, we. They have approved it already. The weather district approved it uh, last night, uh, according to uh, a guy at a big So they're bringing it to you, Judge. We will sign it. They're approved. All right, sir. We have a motion to approve made by Commissioner Cuellar. Second. And a second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item B is uh, a request on behalf of the program requesting your authorization to waive the CDBG redistribu redistribution and recapture <coughs> policy for program year 26, which makes it our 2013. Normally what happens, Judge, is the, the actual recapture policy says that if a city does not meet a ratio requirement at, at 1.5 by April 30th, the, the funds are transferred over to the precinct and then the precinct decides what happens to that money. What we have experienced in the past is that we end up doing that and then as soon as we take the action to transfer it into the precinct, we return back to the city. So we have met the ratio for 1.5. We are not in jeopardy of losing any of the money. So we're requesting that you grant us a waiver not to implement that policy this year. Move for approval. Both in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Item C is a request on behalf of Precinct 1 requesting the approval for the purchase and installation of a water pump at the Sunset Park baseball fields from Green Thumb Landscaping LLC. The amount would be $2,495 and this will be utilizing the 2008 funding at the precinct. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D is on behalf of Precinct 3, requesting the approval of a contract extension with HLH Appraisal Services for an additional six months to complete the appraisal review reports for the General Land Office project uh, at the Benitez Drain. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item E is on behalf of Precinct, um, excuse me, the City of Alton, requesting consideration and action to award into a a warrant enter into a requirements agreement. I'm sorry, this is the city of Alamo. It's a requirements agreement for purchase of materials with Upper Valley Materials LLC for the purchase of hot mix asphalt for a street improvement project identified in one of our work plans. This will be um, for the as actual asphalt concrete and delivery service in the amount of $75 per ton, estimated at 190 tons, cost to be about $14,250. Move for approval. Check. Those in, those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item F is requesting approval of a budget and program amendment for the City of Benitas work plans, fiscal year 24 and 25, which happens to be our 2011 and 2012 funding. The street improvements projects will be canceled and the funds will be transferred to the Parks and Recreational Facility Improvement Line item for additional funding to their Benitas Memorial Park. Move for approval. Okay. <clears throat> Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G is requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code 262.024A4 for professional engineering services. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Presentation of the scoring grid for the purposes of ranking by Commissioner's Court of three professional engineering firms. The three firms were evaluated for the City of Progreso. Javier Hinojosa Engineering with a grade of 95.67, MGE Civil Engineering with a grade of 88.67, and Shanin Engineering LLC with a grade of 85.33. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. G3 is the authority to negotiate a professional engineering service contract with the highest ranked firm of Javier Hinojosa Engineering. For approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item H is requesting the approval to recertify Proyecto Azteca as a community housing development organization, a shoulder within the county of Hidalgo. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And our final item is requesting the approval to execute a 2008 through 2012 home shoulder contract with Proyecto Azteca. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you.
to uh, item 16, Head Start. Good morning. Our first item has to do with the Memorandum of Understanding, and we're not ready for approval. We're perhaps uh, premature. Uh, we thought that by the time that we came to you, PSJ would have already um, finalized <coughs> their part of it. So um, we would like to just um, uh, have it uh, presented to you and coming back and getting it approved once we get everything from PSJA and uh, also for Mr. Crane to review. It has been reviewed by our legal counsel and uh, the policy council has <clears throat> approved contingent upon legal reviews and finalization of that um, memorandum of understanding. Under letter B, we have a presentation for discussion and consideration and approval to enter into a memorandum of understanding between Hidalgo County Head Start Program and the Community Development Corporation of Brownsville and Community Resource Groups Incorporated. And this is for the purpose of financial literacy education classes for our parents. Administration Move. recommends approval. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Letter C, presentation for a dis discussion, consideration, and approval of a one-year interlocal agreement for the lease of premises between Ed Couch Elsa Independent School District and Hidalgo County Head Start Program. There are eight classrooms and a kitchen in, that, uh, in those facilities. Move for approval. Second. Check. Under letter D, <coughs> excuse me. Number one, we have requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements oh, under the whoop, Texas whoop. local. A vote we had a motion and a second. Oh, I'm sorry. On 16C. There's a motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Got ahead of the game here. Under um, letter D, we are requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under the Texas Code Government Code 262.024A4A, Professional Appraisal Services. Move for approval. Second. <clears throat> motion second. No votes in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries. Number two, presentation of the scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by county commissioners of the firms graded and evaluated through the county's approval uh, approved pool of appraisal services for the appraisal of Head Start leased land and facilities. And there's three firms, Lionel Garza Jr. and Associates at 95.33, uh, George Jaime Salazar at 75.33, and Professional Appraisal Services at 82.00. Move for approval. Second. That's motion set. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion and number three, authority to negotiate a professional appraisal services contract with the number one ranked firm of, um, I guess, Lionel Garza Jr. and Associates for the appraisal of the Head Start leased land and facilities. Approval. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. I just want to alert the court that we may not need these services. Uh, this is in connection with responding to the federal uh, <coughs> audit related to having a, a professional appraiser to appraise our properties that we use, the rental properties, as well as land that's leased at below market value, um, because we do use it for in-kind. But if it becomes necessary, that we would have this ready. Thank you. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. I 17, or. Good morning. Good morning again. 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 Okay, this is for um, the WIC Lactation Center. That was what I had referred to earlier. It's a clinical setting available to WIC clients and um, that need help concerning breastfeeding. And uh, we're going to be opening this up soon, well, once we get this approved. And we were awarded uh, additional funding for uh, the WIC Lactation Center for A, a approval to amend the WIC contract number 2014-045-054 in the amount of $191,677 for the WIC Lactation Center. Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
Okay. And B is the approval of the certification of revenues as certified by the county auditor for the FY 2014 WIC Lactation Center. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. All those approved say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. C is the approval to create the following positions. We would need to have a slot one, a registered nurse that's an international board certified lactation consultant and proposed salary is 87360 Slot two, peer counselor manager at 27996 Slot three and four are for peer counselors at 20800 and slot five, a custodian part-time, 8,818 per year at 847 per move, hour. Move for approval. Second. Not this are all under the grant. Yes. There's motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And D, approval of the appropriation of funds in the 191,677. Move for approval. Second. And then motion. E. Excuse me. Oh, I'm There's sorry. motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. E is for the approval of the FY 2014 WIC Lactation Center salary schedule. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we were also awarded monies for a peer counselor, approval to amend the WIC Breastfeeding Peer Counselor Grant 2014-04-50-54 in the amount of 4,400. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. B, the approval of certification of revenues as certified by the County Auditor for the WIC Breastfeeding Peer Counselor Grant. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. C is the approval of the appropriation of funds in, four, in the amount of 4,400. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, three, we were awarded additional funds for lactation services. A is the approval to amend the, the WIC Lactation Services Grant 2014-045054 in the amount of 18,000. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And B is the approval of certification of revenues as certified by the county auditor for the WIC Lactations Grant. Move for approval. Second. Is that for B and C? B and C. Yes. Uh, okay. B. There's a motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Have a good day. Planning Department, Raul. Raul. Good morning, Commissioners. Raul Sim, Planning Administrator. Two items on the agenda. First, the reimbursement financial guarantee for Sendero uh, Trails Phase 1 subdivision. They're requesting a $1,000 reimbursement for the installation safety tank. We have the letter from the health. Everything's in order. So. Move for approval. Second. No objection. There's motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Uh, second item is uh, AMV subdivision precinct four reimbursement again of fifteen hundred dollars for the septic tank and again we do have the letter from health everything's in order. Move, Move for approval. approval. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carried. Uh, item two would be discussion possible action on accepting participation from JF JGF Enterprises LP uh, for road construction of Chavez Road. This is in precinct four. This is a project that there's a development going in. Uh, they're escrowing the money for the material. Uh, the requirement is, is typically uh, one-third of, of the side of the road that you're facing. In this case, the future uh, development will face, uh, both sides will be two-thirds, and the money that he is depositing uh, exceeds the required escrow anyway, so uh, they're going to have enough money for the material uh, to, to build the road, and it's, uh, it's part of the process of the development, so we just want to accept the check, put it in escrow. There's a motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Pose motion. Carries. Great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. That was quick. Hello. Good morning, Commissioners. Jesse, on behalf of Commissioner Joseph Palacios, 
Uh, item 19A is a right-of-way uh, authorization to proceed with condemnation proceedings on the Alberta Drain Project, Parcel 8. Move for approval. Second. There's motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 19B, discussion and action to approve First Amendment between the County of Hidalgo, the Edinburgh Consolidated Independent School District, the City of McAllen, and Hidalgo County Drainage okay. District Number 1 regarding the Mile 17 and a half Road Project. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item 19C, uh, it's for the emergency services facility approval of certification revenues as certified by the county auditor for the emergency service facility project in Linsa Manuel. Approval. Second. There's a motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. C2, approval of the 2014 appropriation of funds for the emergency service facility project in the amount of $250,000. Move for approval. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 19D, approval of supplemental agreement number one to master, master multiple use agreement between the state of Texas and Hidalgo County for the Lynn Samuel Beautification Project uh, 281 and Highway 186. Move for, for approval. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Aida. I know. You gonna hide? I'll go ahead and read the item for Haida, Commissioner. Go ahead. Uh, item 20A is requesting approval to pay the annual service fee for the regional organized crime enforce information in the amount of $150 uh, with authority for the county treasurer to issue the check uh, review and audit after review, audit, and processing procedures are completed by the county auditor. Move for approval. Second. Uh, motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, that's you. Sergio Cruz, Department of Budget Management, yeah. item 21A. Uh, is consideration, discussion, and approval uh, to develop and implement one or more of the following sanitation program models. Uh, we have uh, three different uh, models uh, for the court. We have the exclusive service agreement. Uh, which is basically one vendor countywide. Uh, we have the non-exclusive service agreements, which is basically uh, we would have multiple vendors uh, that would be servicing countywide the same areas. Uh, and then we would have uh, the institution of a permit fee within our collection stations, our transfer stations. I, I recommend no action. I think we need to get together with Colonias and the groups, uh, Lupe and Arais and all those groups and have some meetings with them and town hall meetings, so I, I, okay. uh, I agree with that. As long as we, uh, we do it in a timely fashion with all the meetings and then we, we bring it back to court. We'll bring it back later we'll, we'll coordinate uh, with, with the organizations to set up uh, public hearings uh, at their locations. Uh, does the court want us to, per, to uh, basically present to them all three of the alternatives that we have, including maybe a hybrid of one of these having uh, some type of service agreements and having the collection stations mm -hmm. open at the same time uh, and instituting a permit fee on that? Uh, right. Would, would that be the court I just court think it, I'd like to give them a chance and so they can express their concerns, their feelings, and see what they think, you know. So uh, we'll bring it back. I guess we, we'll get together and I'll bring it back. I have no particular problem with it, except we're going to be talking about the budget, and we're going to be talking about revenues that are out there in reference to the courthouse. Correct. So some decision is to be made. Mm -hmm. We'll Whatever. try to do this within the two the two week time frame that we have. We do have a, a week off uh, next week as far as commissioners' court meeting. So we'll try to see if we can't uh, have these public hearings sometime next week, and that we'd be able to to bring back something back to the court on the June thirtieth. Uh, commissioner's court meeting. Uh, again, yes, this, this is a very pressing matter. Uh, we do need uh, to, to make a decision on this, especially for uh, discussions on, on our 2015 budget process. Just no action on uh, the item regarding sanitation. No. Yes, Judge, the commissioners have requested no, no action on uh, 21 A. Uh, while we conduct public hearings with the uh, different uh, 
organizations, uh, and we hope to have this item back on the agenda by the June 20th a meeting date. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. <laughs> the 30th. 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 It's going to be on Monday. Good morning again. Martha Salazar for the Purchasing Department. Going on to 22A1. This is the presentation of the bids received for the purpose of awarding primary and secondary contracts to the responsible vendor submitting the lowest and best bids for the bulk fuel on on off highway diesel fuel products. Um, we had two participants. The two participants, and it's part of your backup, are our current vendor, Argendegui, and Gold Star Petroleum. The difference between the two bids is 23 hundredths of a penny. But the statute that that guides us as to awarding a bid is we, we are charged with awarding the contract to the responsible bidder who submits the lowest and best bid. So what we did, we had asked for references. We also did that research on the references. And let me tell you, based on the five references that we did uh, uh, low, uh, contact and discuss Gold Star's largest monthly fuel order, and it's Gold Star who is 23 hundredths of a penny lower. Uh, Gold Star's largest monthly fuel order is 30,000 gallons. Hidalgo County's demand, if you just, not on a monthly basis, but just topping the tanks, well, probably on a monthly basis, is 100,000 gallons. Argendegui's largest monthly fuel order is for, I think it is the <coughs> Bear County Transport Authority, and their average fuel for a month is half a million gallons, 541. And we have no complaints on those, on, on the deliverable of those uh, fuels. We did site visits also to both companies. Argendegui Oil has um, a very good site. They also have uh, extra loaner tanks, which is part of our bid. We must have loaner tanks because not all of our sites have underground tanks. So they have them available in case we were to add or delete, especially if we were add loaner tanks. Gold Star Petroleum um, had, I think, three tanks there. But in order for Gold Star to be able to replace the loaner tanks that we demand right now, which I think are 18, there were three, like I said, st uh, tanks in stock, and they would be available within 10 days. But if we had, if we award to Gold Star as primary, it would take them 30 days to get the tanks, uh, and that's if they're used. If we require new tanks, it would take them 60 days, which they would have to order. Now, this current bid expires June 28th, this month. Um, I think that given the enormity of the demand we have for fuel. It is in our best interest and permitted by the statute that I recommend that Argendegui be given the primary award vendor and Gold Star as the secondary. If you were to cap off our tanks on just one load by both vendors using the, the, the figures that I gave you, the difference between the cost of just fueling and capping them off Topping them off one time is $267.40. What was the name of the first one, the primary? Argendegui, that's our current vendor. Gold Star out of uh, FAR is, would be our secondary. That is my recommendation for the reasons that I have cited and the due diligence we have uh, done in making this uh, presentation to you that the 23 hundreds of a penny it is not in our best interest to award it as a primary. Move for approval on your recommendation. Do you, oh, we don't say grounds. <clears throat> okay. I don't care how to answer that question, Commissioner. <laughs> uh, considering all the attributes with the loaner tanks, 
that would have to be our argument is the longer yes, it's the responsibility of the vendor it's not a disparaging word the responsibility it's the ability to service us in the volume that we uh, that we do in one month we take the volume three and a half, three times plus more than their biggest uh, current reference I don't they do not have the capacity I believe that the reason we do primary and secondary is because in the event we have, if, if in the event our primary doesn't deliver, they will be called upon. In addition, in the event we have a disaster, we want to have both of them available. Mm -hmm. and, and right now, uh, it's and the statute, hard. as it says, is to the responsible vendor that submits the lowest and best. It is in our best interest. Right now, for two hundred twenty three hundredths of a penny, I, I, I think it would be a disservice also to them to doom them to fail because I don't believe they can, they can't meet our demands. Okay. We've asked the same question of both vendors. As long as we're good, Steve? You're as good as you can be. Wow. <laughs> no, because it's a fact question. It's, right. it's a fact question that this court has to decide is. And the vendors, been, the vendors were the advised. Bid. The bid specs are very, yeah. are very detailed in advising them. They need to be very aware of our circumstances, oh, of sure. our demands, and all we that have, criteria that is required. We have a motion and a second. Uh, those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is presentation of the scoring grid for the purposes of ranking uh, by Commissioner's Court. The responses received in connection with the request for proposals for financial advisory services. We had two vendors submit, First Southwest, the average score from the graders, which there were six appointed by the court, is 89.83, and Estrada Hinojosa at 90.33. Does the court wish to rank them in the order of the scores? Motion approval. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye. motion carries Item B is requesting authority of the Purchasing Department to proceed to negotiate a letter of engagement commencing to attempt that engagement with the number one ranked firm of Estrada Hinojosa for the provision of financial advisory and related services. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Item three, requesting approval of clarification and correction of agenda item 36906 for March 20th of 2013 as the term of agreement was erroneous, erroneously captioned as one year clarified, clarifying the document to reflect the correct term as stated through the life term of the existing equipment in place for monitoring service for the county owned building located in 9805 North 10th Street, McAllen with ASG. And that will also continue the services. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval to modify the current approved agreement with ASG for monitoring services the county owned building located at 9805 North 10th Street to include open and closed log services for a monthly $5 fee and the monthly total fee would now be $33.95. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. An acceptance and approval to process ASG security invoices for services from the month of March through May. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item four is a presentation of the scoring grid of, from the evaluation committee for the purpose of uh, the, uh, for the proposal received and uh, the purposes for the ranking by commissioner's court in connection with the RFP real estate broker services. These are for those nominated uh, pieces of land that each precinct has now given us and this is for the sale and the promotion of those properties and the the two participants were wm keller williams realtors with an average score of 80 and cbre incorporated with a score of 94 does the court wish to rank them in that the order of their scores Move for approval second those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. motion carries Requesting authority for the purchasing department to commence negotiations with the number one ranked firm of CBRE Incorporated. Move for approval. Second. <coughs> CBRE, that's the one that has Mr. Arriaga on it. I know they have a local rep. All right. Those that's in, what I understand. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 
Item five will be done by Mr. Guerra. Oh, no, it's not that not one sure. yet. I'm so sorry, I'm premature. Award of bid and contract to the responsible vendor submitting the lowest and best bid as detailed in tabulation and uh, contained herein and meeting all specifications and requirements for, for the title project of custodial services for the new administration building, formerly known as uh, the Kmart building, located at 2812 South Business Highway 281 through project number 049. We had three, uh, 16 packets requested, six bids were received. We are recommending ABM janitorial services, DBA ABM janitorial. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion aye. carries unanimously. B1, acceptance and approval of a professional appraisal services agreement. Number 264 with Leonel Garza Jr. and Associates LLC for the provision of appraisal services on an on call basis. And this is for precinct one. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Precinct two. This is approval of the following requisitions listed for operating expenditures exceeding $7,500 as, post, as posted and listed on the agenda. This is Rio Valley Pipe, Martin Marietta, Frontera Materials, and Frontera Materials. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next one is approval of the following uh, invoices listed at, for, pre, for previously approved purchase orders for operating expenditures exceeding $7,500. That was in uh, that was Argendegui at $8,241 and Argendegui again at $9,060.43. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 3A, requesting waiver of provision number one of the Hidalgo County Exiting Elected Officials Expenditure Policy in connection with requisitions exceeding the limit of $7,500, as the delay would have caused the inability to commence a scheduled road construction project and thus leaving county staff and resources idle. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item B is ratification of purchase order number 710131 and 710141 in connection with expedited purchase of road construction materials for Whalen Road Project. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D1, this is Precinct 3, accepting acceptance and approval of the following invoices submitted for contracted project engineer LNG consulting Engineers Incorporated, items one through five, for mile two Moorfield Road West to three uh, to State Highway 364 at 56,82897. ninety-seven. Item two would be mile two north, Inspiration to Moorfield Road, five thousand four hundred ninety-nine dollars and thirteen cents. Liberty Road is number three at fifty-two thousand five hundred and ten dollars. Number four is FM 494 Sherry Road Project at 42,853.86. And item five is for mile three at $64,849.14. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is approval of a professional engineering services contract for the provision of general engineering services for road and bridge projects, drainage improvement projects, and all other projects for Precinct 3 with Javier Hinojosa Engineering as authorized for negotiations on May 27, 2014. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I'm going to take E1, and then the rest will be done by Mr. Guerra. Well, a Marty, why don't I just... Do the whole it, thing. Yeah, Go ahead. Let me just take it from the from the beginning. Judge Commissioner's item uh, uh, E1 uh, is approval of a lease agreement between Hidalgo County and Union Pacific Railroad Company. Um, this is uh, for an address of, of 1051 North Doolittle Road here in Edinburgh. It's for the use of um, premises to be utilized for vegetation control and use incidental thereto only and for no other purpose. Uh, it's with the term of this lease to commence on July 1st of this year for one year unless terminated or renewed or extended as provided in the lease agreement. Judge and Commissioners, I, if I can explain, this property sits north of our facility. Um, they've had it. It's, it's been a weedy lot pretty much, and we want to get in there and kind of maintain it um, for, for a year. Um, just get in there, shred it, and keep it clean. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next action item is requesting an exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code Section 262.024A for professional services. Move for approval. Second. 
Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, presentation of scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by Commissioner's Court of the firms graded and evaluated through the county's approved pool professional appraisal services uh, providers for the sale of properties within Hidalgo County Precinct 4. This is a job specific project. Uh, the firms uh, were Integra Realty Resources, HLH Appraisal Services, George J. Salazar DBA Appraisal House. Appra appraisal House, I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, the evaluation is 89, 91, 94, respectively. How move, would the court to move for approval? Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, based on that ranking, <laughs> item D is authority uh, for the purchasing department to negotiate a professional uh, appraisal service contract with the number one ranked firm of George J. Salazar DBA Appraisal House for a specific, a project specific sale of properties within Hidalgo County Precinct Number Four. Move, move for, for approval. approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Pardon. I'll continue with item two. This is acceptance and approval to pay flat rate assessments incurred uh, by Hidalgo County from 2009 to 2014 to Hidalgo County Irrigation Number no. 1 for 18.76 acre track of land out of the Lot 15, Section 260 Texas Mexican Railroad Company's survey, Hidalgo County, Texas, according to the map and plat thereof recorded in volume two, page 29, map records of Hidalgo County, and as further detailed in the general warranty deed attached here too, through requisition number 00256335, which is attached, the deal, uh, which further details irrigation plat rate assessments, interest attorneys, and processing fees in the amount of $2,643.30, including the issuance and release of check by Hidalgo County Treasurer once the review out and processing procedures are completed. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And we've gotten this nine, number three, acceptance and approval of amendment to contract number 335, PO number 703537 with Aranda and Associates to reduce the fees under Exhibit A cost proposal for the purposes of surveying services, job specific project Brewster Park located in Precinct 4. So moved. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item F under the JPs. Dell County Purchasing Department Fixed Asset Division is requesting and recommending that Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court to approve the removal from inventory of two fixed assets, numbers 23132 and 27845, described and detailed in the attached Exhibit A, with no current value, located at 122 East Park, Far, Texas, in a building once leased by Dell County from Honorable Rosa E. Trevino, JP Precinct 2, Place 2, pursuant to Article 6.2 of the expired lease between Hidalgo County and Judge Trevino. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Under G, Facilities Management, we're requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code 262-024-A4, a professional service. Move for approval. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Presentation of the scoring grid for the purposes of ranking of the firms graded and evaluated through the county's approved pool of professional construction materials testing firms. And this is for the Constable Precinct 1 new building. They were PSI at 76, Terracon at 89, and Rabba Kistner at 90. Does the court wish to rank them in the order of their scores? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We ask for authority to negotiate a professional services contract with the number one ranked of Robert Kistner. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. In a motion to proceed to executive session pursuant to 551071 and 072 of the Texas Government Code. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. It is now 1141. We're in executive session. Back in open session, Mr. Guerra. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Um, I do have quite a bit of request on the part of the court, but let me 
Judge Commissioners, with your permission, there is an agenda item that I need to refer to uh, under the regular agenda for Precinct 4, and that is agenda item 19A. 19A? Is that what it is? 19A, under right of way. Uh, the court took action to proceed with condemnation proceedings on Alberta Drain Project Parcel Number 8, Idalia I. Ruiz. Judge Commissioners, with that being said, or the action that was taken, I'd like to refer back to 6A1. 7A1. Uh, I'm sorry, 7A1. I'm requesting exemption from the competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code, Section 2620-2484. A4. Professional service for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation. I could have a motion to that effect. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item 782, I'm requesting engagement with the law firm of Atlas Hall and Rodriguez for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation and authority to submit a letter of engagement. And that again was specific to item 19A, which was the right of way authorization to proceed with condemnation proceedings on Alberta Drain Project. Parcel 8, Idalia I. Ruiz. I could have a motion to that effect. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay. Judge Commissioners, under open session, if I may, uh, there is no action under A, real estate acquisition appropriation for same. There's no action to be taken under pending and or potential litigation. Item 24C, Judge Commissioners, um, CL 140359-E, Mary Lou Gomez individually and next to friend of Alejandro Rodriguez versus Hidalgo County. Judge Commissioners, I'd like to report that we have a settlement agreement for the court to consider. I'm asking the court, uh, I'm recommending the court that we accept settlement, uh, total settlement on this in this case in the amount of $20,500 um, for the record. The disbursement would be as follows. To the county clerk, as trustee of minor Alejandro Rodriguez, $9,825.33. To Mary Lou Gomez, as next a friend of Alejandro Rodriguez and her attorney, Jesus Sotelo, $10,174.67. And to Mary Lou Gomez individually and her attorney, Jesus Sotelo, $500. Additionally, Judge, uh, I'd like for the court to consider and take action on an idle item fee awarded by the county court at law number five to Robert De Anda in the amount of $2,000 specific to this case. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, motion carries. Item 24D, uh, Cristina Reina versus County of Hidalgo and the City of Mission. Judge Commissioners, for the record, I'd like to uh, assign the case to Ms. Josephine Ramirez uh, at the District Attorney's Office. I could have a motion to that effect. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And the assignment is specific to Hidalgo County and not City of Mission. Item E, cause number CL 142283-G, Leonardo Rodriguez Serna versus Hidalgo County. Judge Commissioners, this was a claim that had been assigned to Palacios and Associates. It has turned into a suit. And so I would like to refer back to item 7A12. Uh, I'm requesting exemption from the competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code Section 2620-2484, Professional Service, for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation. I have a motion to that effect. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 782, I'm requesting the engagement with the firm of, of, um, of, of Palacios and Associates, I'm sorry. Palacios and Associates for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation, authority to submit a letter of engagement, uh, again, specific to Leonardo Rodriguez, Serna versus Hidalgo County. Move for approval. For the record, uh, Palacios did not relate to me. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, motion carries. Item F under open session, civil action number 714-CB, Dash double zero four three eight David Carizales and Rogelia Stabolita Stabolito versus Guadalupe Lupe Trevino Sheriff et al. Uh, Judge Commissioners, uh, this was a claim uh, that we had assigned to Preston Henderson. It has turned into a suit. Uh, I would like uh, to again to refer back to item seven A one and two. Seven A one requests an exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code Section two six two zero two four eight four a professional service for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation. So move. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And item two, requesting engagement with the firm of 
of Preston Henriksen for the provision of legal services representation rep in connection with litigation and authority of submitted letter engagement. No more. Again. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, on that very same uh, action or, or uh, lawsuit, David Carizales and Rogelia Stabulito versus Guadalupe Lupe Trevino Sheriff et al. Um, because of the way that the case is styled, I'd like to again refer back to items 7A1 and 2. Item 7A1, requesting an exemption from the competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code Section 2620244, a professional service for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation. Can I have a motion to that effect? Motion no approval. Check. Those in favor say <laughs> aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 7A2, I'm requesting the engagement with the firm of Michael Lee for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation and authority to submit a letter of engagement. For clarification purposes, uh, Mr. Michael Lee, under this suit, uh, would be representing Gerardo, Mendoza, Duran, and any other unnamed officers associated with this litigation. Oh, in Hidalgo County. Any, yes, sir, Hidalgo County. Move for approval. Sure. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay, and so again, for clar clarification purposes, we have two attorneys assigned, Preston Henriksen and Michael Lee, to this particular case. Item G, Judge Commission is under open uh, session. Claim of Noe Estrada, I'd like uh, settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $71.55. Move for approval. Aye. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye, motion carries. Item H, claim of Ener Sanchez and Damiana Martinez, parents of Monica Sanchez, a minor. Judge Commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer for uh, settlement in the amount of $300. Move for approval. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item I, claim of Jose Osul. Judge Commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $200. Move for approval. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item J, claim of Jose Palomin. Judge Commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $67.48. Move for approval. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item K, claim of Enrique Rubio. Again, Judge Commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $132. Move for approval. Check. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item L, Judge Commissioners, uh, uh, the claim of Carlos Contreras. Uh, at this time, I'd, uh, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $132.01, as well as uh, Commissioner Palacios, I would ask that you would abstain. Uh, from taking uh, action on this item? Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Judge Commissioners. Uh, unless the court, uh, there's a need to go back in executive session, there's no action under, under item 25 and 26. All right. Need a motion to adjourn? No move. Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Joe. Our next meeting is going to be when, brother? Uh, our next meeting is uh, the. Uh